Well, I have this image that I'm going to want to draw on this uh, very large uh, drawing sheet here. This is an 18, an 18 by 24 inch sheet of paper, drawing paper from Canson. And this here is not quite an eight by ten it's more like a it's more like an eight by nine now because of how big this sheet is i'm going to need a, a big ruler so i'm going to use this ruler right here and uh it's just make sure that it's clean on both sides because you don't want to smear uh, things all over your paper to get some things on here now the task at hand is that I'm going to take this and you can see that here we got uh, looks like it's nine and a half inches the image itself is nine and a half inches wide and it's about uh, eight just just under eight and a quarter it's like eight and three eighths is that eight three eighths no that would be three sixteenths so anyway eight three sixteenths so anyway i need to enlarge this onto this paper and the process for doing that see how did i already do that i already marked up my paper here it's like this is going to be quite the task. All right, so each one of these squares is one inch. It's one inch wide and they're one inch tall. And if I'm going to convert this image that's nine and a half inches onto something that's 24 inches, I have to decide how much border I want to leave on here. Now, knowing that I have eight inches or just a little over eight inches, about eight inches and three sixteenths, uh, for the height of this image and it's going to go on an 18 inch paper if I was to double this this would be 16 inches high because this is just a little over 8 inches so it'll be like let's say it'd be about 16 and a half inches from here to here well if this is 18 inches that would leave me a border uh, of only three quarters of an inch on the bottom and three quarters of an inch on the top that is not much of a border I'd kind of like a, a bigger border so I'm going to instead of doubling the squares I'm going to go one and a half times and that's going to leave a pretty sizable border on here but that's fine it's still going to be uh, a 50 percent larger uh, enlargement of this image so instead of dealing with one inch I'm going to go from one inch to one and a half inch squares and that will give me a 50 percent increase in enlargement so I won't need this to do that now that I know how much I want to make my squares what I need to do is figure out how to get it centered well if I'm dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half squares. Nine and a half times 1.5. So what you have is half of 9.5 is 4.75. You add 4.75 to nine and a half, you get uh, 14.5. 14.25 inches and then if you take 
14.25 from 24, you end up with 9.75, and then you divide that by 2 because you want equal borders. Uh, I'm going to forget all this. Let's do this with a calculator. I mean, I'm doing this in my head and it's making my head hurt. All right, so here's what we have. All right, got my calculator, everything's all nice and clear. Okay, the width of the image itself we know is 9.5 inches. And we're gonna increase the size by 50%. So what you do is you multiply by 1.5 and that equals 14 and a quarter as I had already mentioned. The overall width of this is 24 inches. We have to subtract this from the 24 to know how much border we're going to end up having. And I can see that obviously 14 from 24 would be 10 inches. So it'd be, here's an additional quarter inch, so it's nine inches, 0.75 would be the difference. And if, and if you don't believe it, then I'll just do 24 minus 14.25 equals, and there you go, nine inches and three quarters of an inch. That's what 0.75 represents, three quarters of an inch. Now, this 975, which is what's going to be blank, we're not going to draw on it, needs to be divided among the two sides. Half of this goes here, half of this goes here. So you divide that by 2 equals 4.875. To convert 0.875 to inches, well, you have to take, for example, if I'm dealing with sixteenths of an inch, which is the smallest my ruler will do is sixteenths, I can take uh, this 0 .75, 0 .875, multiply that by the 16, because they're 16th of an inch increments, and that gives me 14 16th, which is the same as 7 eighths. Well, there's your math lesson for today. So, we're going to have, uh, let's see, what was it, 9? And I'm going to write this down here so I don't forget. Okay, so we're talking 7 eighths. Okay. And this was 9 and 3 quarters, I believe. We divided it by 2. 9.75 divided by 2 equals. Okay, so it's 4 and 7 eighths on each side. All right. So let's do that over again. Coming over here to one side and we said we want four and seven eighths which is right here four seven eighths and four and seven eighths Let's draw that new line in here. You can see it's way bigger border. As a matter of fact, that's a lot of border. But down here it won't be so much, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with it. I got more paper than I need. All right, there's the bottom, there's the middle, there's the top. Perfect. Hold the pencil in the back end, just let it glide, don't press. All right, well that's our new line right there. So there's a big old border there. And then we're gonna go on this side here and do the same thing. Okay, so we got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and seven eighths comes right here at the 13 and eighth mark. Okay, over here. 13 and an eighth mark is right there, and then down here is the 13th and an eighth mark. Okay. A 
line this up here. Where's that other one? There it is. There's that one. Uh, there's that one. And then there's that one about right there. Okay. Glide it real gently down there like so. Now we're going to work with this part of our framing of this grid. And again, we measure this and we find... Okay, well it actually is exactly eight and a quarter from from there to there that's eight and a quarter so eight and a quarter let's get our calculator back eight and a quarter is 8.25 that's eight and a quarter and remember we want to enlarge this by 50% so we're going to multiply by 1.5 equals, so our total height is going to be 12.375, all right? And again, we're dealing with sixteenths, that's the smallest little increments that I have on here are sixteenths. So if I want to find out how many sixteenths is 0.375, let me first write down the fact that I don't want to forget that we're going to go to 12, 375, and let's find out what 375 is. So, you go 16 times 0.375, and that tells me 6 sixteenths, which is the same as 3 eighths. So, I'm, I'm actually, uh, it's 12 and 3 eighths. Now, i got to divide this in two, so obviously... Uh, the the six sixteenths is way easier to divide by two than three eighths. So it's going to be uh, twelve and six sixteenths divided by two is six and three sixteenths. Okay. Because half of 6 sixteenths is 3 sixteenths and half of 12 is 6. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So, I'm going to now, starting from the top of the paper here, I'm going to go in 6 and 3 sixteenths. No, nope. hold on a second. I'm doing something wrong here. Let me let me think this. Okay, so we know that the thing is going to be 12 and 3 seven fives. What I didn't do, okay, is 12 and 3 seven five out of the height of this paper. This paper is hi Carita. Okay, this paper is 18 inches. So go 18 inches, subtract the 12. 0.375 so it's minus 12.375 equals okay it's 5.625 now I'm going to divide it by 2 Ay, carita. all right so now let me divide that by 2 equals I need 2.8125 up here and 2.8125 here so if I need 2.8125, that's the same as 2 and 0.8125 times 16, 13 sixteenths. All right, that's going to be 13 sixteenths. All right, so I'm going to do 2 and 13 sixteenths this way, 2 and 13 sixteenths this way. Oh boy, it's so much fun. This is why I'm doing a video, so you can see what all I have to go through with all this math stuff. Okay? And that's if you want to enlarge and you want to do it accurately. So 2 and 13 sixteenths. So, we'll put that up here like so. 
1, 2, and 13 sixteenths is right there. And then over here, 1, 2, and then 13 sixteenths is right there. And then I'm going to just put my ruler at both of those marks. And glide my pencil ever so gently just just from line to line I'm not going to go all the way across the roller there I just want to draw my framing here for the grid okay so there's the top and now we do the same for the bottom and to do that I'm going to need to move this paper up off the bottom because it's got a ledge here and it's gonna make it hard for me to do that there we go and One, two, and thirteen sixteenths. It's right there. And one, two, and thirteen sixteenths is right there. All right, now I can let it fall. That's no problem there. There we go. Line those two marks up. Glide the pencil from side to side. And there, my friends, is where my drawing is going to occur. We have determined that we're going to be doing one and a half inch squares. And if you recall from the grid here, it starts at the very beginning and then it ends with a partial square here. You need to do the same here. So you're going to start with a full square from the left corner, okay, and work your way this way and full square downwards, all from the left corner. So starting with that, I'm going to lay my ruler down like this. And I'm going to go one and a half, one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. So we got six. And then there's your leftover on the edge there. Okay. Then starting from top to bottom, same thing. Okay, you have and a half there, whole number, half number, whole number. All right, do the same on the other side. All right, half number, whole number. So if I was now to link those two marks, from side to side, lightly holding the pencil in the very back. Move up to the next mark. Okay, so there are all my horizontal lines for this grid. Now, what I need to do is I need to mark the bottom one and a half inches to go along with the ones I've already did in the top. So, putting this down here, like so, we have the half mark, full mark, and half. Just from the top of the rectangle to the bottom of the rectangle. Next mark.
and there we go it all looks pretty good let me zoom in here with this camera and you can see the nice squares should be showing up okay so uh, it's very light but that's the way you want it light I can see it clear but with all this light going on here in the cameras and all I don't know if you can really pick that up but you know I have all these little dots and stuff that I like to clean up so I'll kind of go around here and clean a few things up just because they're distracting to me so this is the initial setup of the enlargement grid the next step that I'm going to have to take now is I'm going to have to go through for example in this image determine where the eye starts and so forth and I'm going to apply it to the uh, appropriate square so for example this side of the eye right here is one two squares so that'd be one two squares the inside of the eye right here is four squares up and also this uh, four squares so you have one two three four one two three so it's right in this area right here so just remember that as you're noticing the difference between here and here that it's going to be one and a half times as much here so you have to gauge it but there is a easier way and what you want to do is get yourself one of these proportional dividers now to set this thing up remember that I decided I'm going to go uh, one and a half um, or 50 percent so for, for one inch to one and a half inches I'm going to have to go for example I want to take this and instead of using a ruler I'm going to use my grid so let's say that I measure one inch so there's one inch this needs to be one and a half inches and it already so I already had this set for one and a half inches so this is already set from one inch to one and a half inches uh, and if yours isn't you simply remove this and adjust the holes and everything until you get that correct enlargement so now when I go in here for example and let me zoom in here so that you can see when I want to measure where the the inside of this eye is in these two squares right here I'm gonna use my inch side because these are inch squares and I'm gonna measure and I can see that this eye crosses the line right there so whoops let me zoom in a lot as much as possible so you can see that okay there we go now look I'm gonna go exactly where this, this this line here of this eye this eyelid here crosses this white grid line is close and accurate as I can all the way to the end of that square okay so you see that now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the actual enlargement grid one two three four squares over one two three four squares over taking my 2h which I use to draw the grid and putting the one and a half inch side now because this is the side I measured here the opposite side I'm going to go here onto the grid and I'm going to put a little mark right there and that's telling me that that's how far in I need to go for the inside of that eye now I'm also going to do this for the other parts of the eye that crosses the line for example I did this and you'll notice that it comes right over here and it crosses right there don't get this confused with that part right here or this part way over here if you start here make sure you're you get the correct line the correct curve that you're working with so here I'm going to use the one inch side again and I'm going to measure from the bottom of the square to 
to where I see that the, I know the eyelashes are covering it, but it's about right there. So I'm going to go measure that really precise because I want exact proportions. So there you go. See, I'm going from there to there where this white part of the eyelid goes up. And then I'm going to use the opposite side now. And we're talking one, two, three, four, right? This is the very edge, one, two, three, four lines. The very edge, one, two, three, four lines. And from the very bottom of that square, and I'm going to mark here. So I know that this goes up to there. And what I'm going to do also is, oh, I should have showed you that. I didn't do it. Okay, so here I marked one, two, three, four. And you go here and I marked the little line here. So this is going to connect to here because of this eye. But because it's got a curve to it, this eye has a curve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to need one or two more marks. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. The best way for me to do this, as you can see, is you have from corner to corner as a reference. I could just do a stick of note like this here. Okay, just the sticky part of the sticky note let me back out here a little bit. Okay, you don't want that on your paper. You'll hold on to the graphite. So in this case, I'm going to make a nice little edge. No stickiness, good. All right. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna take from corner to corner of this square, and I'm just gonna really lightly Draw a line, all right? From corner to corner in the four square over. And so what I wanna do is right here, and I'll zoom in again. Okay, I'm gonna go with my paper here, and I'm gonna go corner to corner, for example, just like that. Now I can put my proportional divider right on here, or I could just take this paper and mark the corner itself of the square and where that line intersects. Remember, I've got my paper going from corner to corner and that's the distance. Then take the inch side, take the inch side of your proportional divider and measure it out like so. And that's the distance that I get right there. Use the opposite side and right on that little line, the diagonal line, I'm going corner to corner with the one and a half inch side of the thing. And so now I can see where my line is going to go. And it's going to go ever so lightly draw in that subtle curve which happens to be 1 point 2 points and then the line through here would be there's the third point and then I just connect it all right now I'm going to have to complete this same process for both eyes, the nose, all these things. And this is going to take a lot of work and a lot of time, but what I wanted to do was show you how to get this thing started and how to start enlarging. And when I'm done, I'll show you the sketch uh, all inside this grid here, and then we can get into uh, of course the actual drawing, the actual shading and blending and, and so forth. But that's how, uh, these are the steps that I take to take one size, make it to a bigger size, and then get that image drawn onto the uh, pa drawing paper.
Okay, that's about as far as I'm going to go in this particular video. It's going to get very long, but I have completed the details of the eye, and that's all I need is these main details for me to start actually drawing, shading, blending to uh, make realistic eyes. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of it off camera, but uh, you have the idea of how to enlarge. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, really would appreciate it. Helps the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Click the notification bell so you'll be informed of all upcoming videos. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.